I hate to be the bearer of kind of reality, but most undergraduate programs that I see are still very much stuck in the dark ages. How can that be relevant? It's, it's just not. Why are we having student teachers doing this? I just, I don't know. Folks, I'm Erin, and I'm going to get right into it today with five things that I keep trying to teach my graduate students, five lessons that I'm trying to instill upon them, um, specifically because they come into my program with a lot of baggage on how to teach and what's the best thing to teach and all these best practices. And so I spend quite a bit of time trying to undo a lot of these lessons that they've learned along the way. So the very first thing is the idea of scripting lessons. Now, I don't mean like the scripting portions of lessons. You know, it's okay if, if you're somebody who's like me and you can just talk, 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 talk forever and ever. If you want to say something to students and then maybe figure out a way to say it in, in five words or fewer, that's, that's good scripting. But I'm amazed at how many students come into my program having been taught that they have to fully script out every single part of a lesson from what they're going to say to how they're going to say it to who they're going to direct it to. Folks, you cannot script out life. You, you can't script out how certain students are going to react to some of your things. And so let's just kick that idea to the curb like right now. Like we don't need to fully script out lessons. That's not reality. Along the same lines as that is this idea of having to actually finish their entire lesson when they're teaching. And if you've done that, whoa, you're this amazing teacher. You've magically figured out this formula of pacing and, and balancing out all those needs and you've gotten all those things in the lesson and you've covered all your bases and, and you've checked off all those standards. That is false as well. That is, that is so off the mark. Because if you're thinking to yourself that your measure of success is, is getting from the start to the finish, you're missing the, the whole point of being adaptable and accommodating and, and making room for student individuality and agency and all that kind of stuff. I actually view it more successful if you don't get to the end of your lesson because you have become accommodating and adaptable and flexible with your students. And that to me is way more important than finishing the lesson. It's not this black mark on your record. Keep doing it, keep leaning into that, I think it's just awesome. The third thing that I'm trying to fix is this idea that music is really the most important thing. In fact, I would say that a lot of people who come into my graduate program, they come into the graduate program because they've realized that music is not the most important thing, but they're not sure how to fix that in their teaching. They're not sure how to honor whole child learning, social and emotional development. They're trying to really figure out how to create this really solid foundation for students beyond the music. How many times have we experienced ourselves as teachers that music is the very most important thing? This is something to really work on. The fourth thing that I'm trying to unteach is this idea that the way that they learned how to teach in their undergraduate teacher preparation program is the only way to teach. We've definitely made progress in undergrad. We definitely have classes now that, that talk a little bit about adaptive music and, and we have guest lectures and, and conversations and, and that's a really good start. But at the end of the day, the bones of many programs for undergraduate music teacher preparation are still the same bones that we had 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. We're still teaching teachers the same way to teach that we did 40 years ago. So this idea of, of unlearning that, that's really hard to do because we are all products of that kind of education. It's difficult to go against the grain. How can they be different? What else is there? Because music professors don't know everything. The fifth thing is this idea that teachers feel like they are powerless, especially younger teachers who are in their first through five years of teaching. They have this feeling of, of lack of power because they don't have 10 years experience in the field, 20 years of experience in the field. 
they feel a lack of power to be able to initiate change, be leaders in the field. Um, they're just feeling a lack of empowerment. And to me, this couldn't be further from the truth. I can't even tell you how excited I am for our profession in the next five years, 10 years, because I'm seeing people who are retiring out of music education. I am seeing lots of jobs open, right? That's not a great state to be in right now. But what I do see is that these jobs are going to be filled with people who have wonderful, amazing ideas that are innovative and people who are excited to get into the field and people who have new ideas who can create real change. And so for me, if, if you are somebody who is in your first year, second year, all, all the way up through like years seven, years eight, you are the future of our profession. It is you and you have so much to offer. And these are the things that I'm, I'm trying to help show my graduate students and the teachers that I work with. I'm thinking to myself, gosh, they actually have so much power. You can speak up. You can have a voice. You can share your ideas. You have value. It's really important that our early career teachers, that they understand that they have, they have value. And so these are just five things that I'm trying to unteach, undo within people that I work with every single day within students in my program. And it's working out really, really well, but there's progress to be made. And so if this is you, if, if anything here resonates with you, I'd love to know out of these five things, does anything speak to you? Because I know that when I was younger, it all spoke to me, which is why I do what I do now. It all spoke to me. And so I'd love to hear. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on this. And with that, I'll say have a wonderful day. Thanks. Take care.